We have a beam, length 4 metres, mass 20 kilograms, and it's suspended horizontally by two vertical ropes, which is shown. It's modelled as a non-uniform rod, and the ropes as light and extensible strings. It's given that the tension in the rope at C is three times the tension in the rope at D. So let's get some forces on. That would be T, and that would be 3T. Determine the distance of the centre of mass of the beam from A. So it's, it's non-uniform, it's not going to be in the middle. Actually, because the tension is bigger here, the centre of mass is going, to be, is going to be towards it rather than away from it. But if you don't quite put it in the right place, that's not a big deal. There's two things to consider in this kind of problem. Forces, which it's an equilibrium. Because it's suspended horizontally, it's not moving anywhere. It must be that the resultant force is zero in every direction. And actually, I'm just going to jump straight into it. We might as well just resolve the forces straight away. 3t plus t is going to equal 20g. So 4t is 20g. t is 5g. So I can now cross it out, right? 5g and here 15g. And the other thing you have to consider is moments. So the, there's about any point, the resultant moment will be zero. Moment's given by force times distance, or the perpendicular component of the force times distance. So we just need to consider where to take moments about. Now we could take moments about C and eliminate, for example, this force here, but because I'm being asked for the distance of the center of mass from A, I might as well just take moments from A and say that this distance here is x and work out x, basically. So um, clockwise moments, well, that's just coming from the weight. So take moments at A, just like that. Clockwise moment is going to be 20g times x. And then that's going to equal the anti-clockwise moment. So we've got 15g times 0.5 plus 5g times. Now, if the whole thing's 4 and that bit's 0.7, then it's going to be 3.3. In fact, I can just cancel the, the g's out at this point because they're, they're everywhere. So 20x is going to equal 15 times 0.5. Plus 5 times 3.3, which gives 24. x is 24 over 20, which is 1.2 meters. So there's only a distance, that's it. We're now told that a particle of mass m is placed on the beam at a point where the magnitude of the moment of the particle's weight about C is 3.5 mg newton meters. So let's just um, try and get heads around that. Remember, moment is force times distance. So it's going to be m times the distance from c and it's equal to 3.5 oh sorry mg the weight times the distance from c and that's equal to 3.5 mg so the mg's cancel out the distance is 3.5 which basically means the weight is going to be applied at B. Okay, I don't know why I didn't just say that at that. I guess it was just testing us, our understanding. But here is our mg. And then we're asked to determine the largest possible value of m. So if m is really small, obviously the tensions will change slightly, but they'll be able to hold the string, uh, sorry, hold the beam. String can hold the beam, no problem. But at some point, it's going to get like really big, and it's going to just like cause um, the the beam to to tilt essentially, to tip. 
And there's something special that happens at that point. And I just want to talk about very briefly what happens. It's a bit easy, I think, to understand on horizontal ground. Let's say we put a really heavy weight here. Okay, then it's there's going to be a normal reaction on both of these. Both of these are little kind of pivots until this gets so heavy that it's going to tilt and it's going to tilt about this point and suddenly the normal reaction would disappear from here. And that is what is going to happen here when the beam tilts. There will be no tension at C. In fact, I need to modify this diagram slightly because this is going to be T1 and this is now going to be T2. Sorry, that was calculations from before, but that 1.2 meters is still correct. So, so now what I'm saying is the beam is going to tilt and it's going to end up kind of doing this sort of thing. And this the string here is going to become slack. That's subtle, but that's what's going to happen. And so T2 here, T2 is going to be zero. And I should just say that it's going to tilt at uh, the member because we're asked for the largest possible value of M. So at we will have we will have the largest possible value of m when about to tilt. OK, so we've, we've only got three forces on the system got the weight, which we still know where that is acting. We've got this new mg, which we don't know what m is. And then we've got t1, we don't know what that is either. Now we could resolve forces here and get t1 in terms of 20g and mg. But this is where we just have to pick a really good point about which should take moments here, because then I just eliminate t1 from the problem. Take moments at d then it's going to be mg multiplied by 0 0.7 is going to equal 20g. Right, it's got to figure this one out. So if that is 1.2 and that is 0 0.7, then I can add them up to give uh, 1.9. And therefore, this distance is going to be 2.1. So 20g times 2.1. Cancel out the g's. We're just going to get m is going to be 20 times 2.1 over 0 0.7. Of course, you can put this in your calculator, but 2.1 divided by 0 0.7 is the same as 21 divided by 7, so it's 3. So it's 20 times 3, which gives 60 grams. That is the maximum weight that we can put on um, without it tilting. So, yeah, I hope. Fully happy with that. We've got a, I like this question. It's a, it's got a non-uniform part. Um, well, we had to work out the center of mass. That was good. And then this subtle part B where it's tilting. Just want to kind of talk about it again. So we've worked out where the mass is. It must be a, at B that that's being applied to give the moments that it was talking about. Three point five mg, and then. The largest possible value is the point at which is in equilibrium, but it's like it's uh, about to tilt. And then we lose our tension here. Apply moments to the system. It all works out. And we get M is 60. Okay, thanks.